severe weather already ongoing, but outbreak potential is going to be there as we move through the rest of April 2nd. What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Keg is back with you. We're going to talk about the timeline, the risk area. There's the potential for long track tornadoes today. Then we'll focus our attention to the new Northeast, specifically New England, with a big time snowstorm coming our way. Timing and totals coming up. And then at the end of the video, we're going to have a short update on the latest cloud forecast for the eclipse. Longer one coming up, more in depth one coming up on Friday, but we're going to touch on the latest data there. We're going to jump right into this one as this severe weather threat today, April 2nd, likely going to be a nasty one. You see there the big red bullseye in the center of your screen. That is a moderate risk from the Storm Prediction Center. That's through a lot of Kentucky, a lot of Indiana, and then moving into parts of western West Virginia into central and southern Ohio. Level 3 risk area, that enhanced risk area, encompasses a lot of the deep south into the Ohio River Valley, even extreme southwest Pennsylvania. This is likely going to be an intense and large-scale severe weather outbreak throughout the course of today and into tomorrow, April 3rd. This is the most concerning part. It is rare that you see that red area, uh, that hatched red area in parts of central Kentucky into Ohio into Indiana. That is a 15% shot, and I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but that's a 15% chance to see a tornado within 50 miles of your region or where you're at. That is a very high probability, and when you see that those black lines going down your screen, that hatched area, and the yellow, by the way, is a 10%. That is a significant chance as well. But those black lines, we call it a hatched area. This is where you're going to have the potential for violent tornadoes, those EF2 plus tornadoes. Violent category starts at EF3 and above. But those strong tornadic potential, especially in this red and then also in the yellow areas, and that's going to extend for us into Georgia, into parts of Mississippi, Alabama, into Tennessee, Kentucky, Indiana, and parts of extreme southwest PA and then into West Virginia and of course Ohio where that bullseye of that major severe weather risk. So that's the risk area. Now we want to jump right into it. Now we're fast forwarding into about two o'clock. There's severe weather ongoing and we're going to do a lot of bouncing so forgive me but I want to try to get in as many people as possible because this is likely going to be an outbreak that extends from the Great Lakes all the way to the Gulf of Mexico. So here we go fast forwarding to four five o'clock central into eastern time and I want to show you this. This is what we're focused on. These isolated kidney bean things. These are supercell thunderstorms. Each one of these capable of producing those very, very strong tornadoes that the Storm Prediction Center is warning and that we are on here again doing this video update making sure that you are weather aware today across Indiana, Ohio, and then really point south for us all the way through the Gulf of Mexico. So this is risk area number one, and it ramps up. That severe weather threat ramps up again. Apologize for the big zoom out. But at the same time here, as we move from 5 to 6 o'clock, this is all in eastern time. So 5 o'clock central, moving through central Tennessee into Alabama, now east of the Mississippi River, uh, into Alabama, extreme northwest, and then into Mississippi itself. We're going to zoom right back in because these potential long-lived supercell thunderstorms that could contain long-track tornadoes continues into the evening. This is 7 central, 8 eastern, and we still have these kidney bean-shaped guys here. So south of Toledo into the Columbus area and then extreme southwest Ohio uh, closer to Cincinnati. Same time, maybe an hour or two later, this is 7 central or 8 central, I should say, 9 central. This is still Tuesday, April 2nd, today, when we're recording this video, and we have that very similar scenario going on. We were also in that hatched area, albeit maybe slightly lower from a probabilistic standpoint, but that chance is there for long track tornadoes. You see these isolated guys in the line there. Whenever supercells and then typically, again, they're isolated anyway, but when they're discrete like that, they have a better chance of producing those long-lived tornadoes. Again, I like to say that they are selfish things, these supercell thunderstorms. They want all of the ingredients to themselves. When they compete, more often than not, again, they, that limits the tornadic potential, at least those big ones anyway. So there's 1 o'clock in the morning Eastern. Midnight Central, getting into April 3rd. Severe weather threat now moving uh, into extreme southeast Alabama. And again, these discreet guys here don't like that. Okay, so this is going to be late at night. Make sure you have a way to get your warnings. Your local TV station's weather app, it's more than likely free. And you can set those alerts to 
your location. It'll buzz and wake you up if you need to. Make sure those are turned on. Make sure weather radios, if you have them, it's also a great way to do it. Make sure that they are turned on as well. You see that supercell threat continues into extreme western Georgia. Nasty thunderstorms ongoing through Atlanta at this time into northwest South Carolina. Look at the scope of this storm. Nothing severe in Chicago, but this is where we're also dealing with some snow. I don't have the colored radar turned on where it's going to show you the different precip types. But again, that heavy snow is also continuing for us into parts of Wisconsin into Michigan. Crazy strong spring storm, but all of that has the potential to be severe as well. Nasty storms continue into the morning in southwest PA. Also, the heavy rain moving into New England, which will then transition into a secondary area of low pressure. We talked about this last week. That is going to develop right here and then blast New England with some very heavy snow. For that, we'll transition. And again, as always, if you have any questions or concerns, post those in the comments. I'd also love to know where you're tuning in from. If you have any severe weather reports or anything like that, when you can do so safely, post them in the comments of this video. Winter weather alerts popping back up. Winter storm watches in blue, encompassing a lot of upstate New York, into Vermont, into New Hampshire, into Maine for potential for a likelihood anyway for a plowable snow significant snow likely that's going to be greater than six inches and some of us are going to eclipse a foot before all is said and done here especially in interior new england from right about in here that's going to be the bullseye area it looks like central vermont central new hampshire into central maine there's six o'clock on April 4th, we have heavy snow falling into New Brunswick, into Maine, into upstate New York, into Vermont, into New Hampshire, and then northern and western Massachusetts as well. That snow is going to continue until we get into April 5th. So that's three days from now. It's going to be winding down and then sliding up into Canada. But nonetheless, some very heavy snow. Now, this is the straight-up European model run here. So I want to be clear that this is a model forecast. I have it both set in inches and then centimeters for my Canadian friends. But you see it right here, Berlin, 10 inches. And I think, again, this is going to be the area where we could get up to a foot and a half of snow. So right on into here. That's where we could get a foot to 18 inches of snow. So the heaviest snow going to fall there, three to six inches from Portland, Bangor. We might be able to get more than four inches as well, maybe closer to four to eight inches of snow. So this is going to be a very intense storm. It's a very weird spring storm as... We have the big time severe weather threat, of course, which is not uncommon this time of the year. But then it develops that secondary area of low pressure over the Atlantic and then just blasts New England with this heavy snow. So there's the timeline and totals on that as we move into the rest of today. Now, I want to give you guys another update on the eclipse. This is the latest model data. And unfortunately, for my friends in Texas and parts of Arkansas anyway, things look to be the same. Ensembles are latching on that we are going to have a rough go of things in Texas and southern Arkansas especially. And then also maybe around Lake Erie, we're going to have some issues. Honestly, the best place right now, and it's looked like this for a week. There are a lot of comments on there that, hey, it's a week out. And yes, I agree. A lot of things can change in the weather world. We talk about that all the time. I'll be the first to tell you that. Ensembles have been latching on, and I'll show you real quick. The deal with this, we have a big upper low out here. That is going to drive Pacific moisture into Texas. We also have flow off the Gulf, which is going to likely lead to heavy rain along the North Gulf Coast. So through parts of the path of totality, especially in the southern end, that's what we're going to be dealing with. I do think viewing potential gets better in northeast Arkansas, into extreme northwest Kentucky, and then into southern Indiana. That's where things are looking pretty good. They're looking okay in northern Ohio. Still have to contend with some clouds. And with the lake being around, especially this far out still, you still have to be worried, just concerned until the fat lady sings, so to speak. Uh, some clouds, it looks like, going to be towards uh, off of uh, Lake Ontario and Lake Erie. So we're looking okay, but not the best. Honestly, the best place right now anyway and let me advance this, and you can kind of see from a model perspective the cloud cover percentage. There you go. San Antonio, it's looking ugly. Dallas, not the best. Little Rock, eh, not the best either. Paducah, we're doing okay. Indianapolis, 29% sky cover there. Columbus, about a 70% sky cover, so we're still dicey. Buffalo, eh, we're watching that closely. 
But there you go. The places that are getting blasted by the snowstorm this week, over the next couple of days, are likely going to be, at this point anyway, the best opportunity to see the total solar eclipse on Monday, April 8th. So there you go. Vermont, New Hampshire, upstate New York, Maine, into New Brunswick. That's what it's looking like. That's what it continues to look like. And that's what it has looked like now for a week. Alrighty, guys, please be safe if you are in the severe weather risk area. And it is a big area. Again, any questions, please post them in the comments. I will do my best to get back to you. Those that are friends of the channel know that. We like to have this weather conversation here. That's why this channel is here to talk about the weather, to break down the weather, and to do so in a way that's not going to scare people or hype anything out of proportion. But with all seriousness, this outbreak potential does look pretty high and it does look pretty rough again for our friends from the Great Lakes into the Gulf of Mexico. And then that big time snowstorm takes over. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. If you want to stay updated on all things weather, hit that subscribe button. If you found this content helpful, please hit that thumbs up button. It really does help us out a lot. Stay safe. We'll catch you soon.